You know the name? Um, you know the name. You probably know the voice too, very annoying voice, but it's more about what she says with it. And Coulter makes offensive comments about Wolves' son. It's just sick. First, let's see the emotional moment. The moment I just referenced between Governor and his family. And when our daughter was born, we named her Hope. <laughs> Hope, Gus, and Gwen, you are my entire world, and I love you. I'm letting you in on how we started a family because this is a big part about what this election is about. I wanted to hear his speech, but you know, and I thought it would be good. I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> Everybody who watched that fell in love. They just loved this family, this kid. And that's not about policy, that was a human moment. And I just was like, oh man, I love, I love this kid. And he loves his dad and his dad loves him. The whole family's in love with one another and they're unbothered, humble and unbothered. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. But Ann Coulter apparently was watching something else. I can't believe she was watching the same organic, emotional, proud moment that the rest of us were. Ann Coulter's trying to explain away her attack on Governor Tim Walz's neurodivergent son. In a post that platformed speech against the 17 year old, as Raw Story reports, Coulter said on X Thursday evening, she deleted the comment made earlier in the day. That the teenager was, quote, weird for crying and saying, that's my dad during his father's speech at the Democratic National Convention Wednesday night. There it is, she deleted it, but you see what we have on the screen for you. I know you believed it anyway, because she's gone low before. But this is just, I, I've been asking the last couple of days, how low can you go? I don't think we know the bottom yet. She saw that. And decided, oh, I know what, I'll tweet this out to the world. I'll attack this teenager who's proudly saluting his dad, sicko. There's another word, it's not weird, you behave like a sicko. How do you even respond to that? Breaks down in tears at father's DNC speech and that's what your reaction is. <clears throat> make it make sense. The right's obsession with the word weird stems from Governor Walz's running mate, Vice President Kamala Harris, dubbing the MAGA right weird. Moment has changed the messaging of the 2024 presidential campaign. Democrats have rallied behind, calling the GOP weird, sick, freaks. And just when you were about to think that was too much, they behave like this. So isn't that weird? Isn't Ann Coulter's behavior sick? And the people who joined in, aren't they sick freaks? It fits about more than a campaign, it's real. Coulter's explanation now came in response to a tweet from X user Nick at Lilabowski11, whose message she shared. I'm guessing she didn't know he had autism, even though he looks a little special, he wrote. I took it down as soon as someone told me he's autistic. Coulter replied, but it's Democrats who go around calling everyone weird, thinking it's hilariously funny. But you're acting weird. It's not like they're, they're just kind of painting, well, they're narrating your story. You have the one guy who said that women with cats and no children, he, he attacked them, that's what you guys did, okay? You have the guy at the top of the ticket on the right tweeting 40 times. I guarantee you the speech didn't last that long, I'm gonna find out, okay? That's weird, It's we're just telling your story. This is what you gave us to work with. 
and Coulter. Again, trying to clean it up and deleting and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, another user pointed this out. Watch. Right there. That's what I run. That's what I run. <laughs> We're gonna just take it. Time for our break anyway. Mm. I remember that. Another user pointed this out. So Kyle Rittenhouse there sniveling, uh, trying to explain why he carrying uh, that rifle, that shotgun, whatever it was, had to open fire, had to travel from his state to open fire on people who were simply protesting, okay, and saying Black Lives Matter. He had to open fire on them, then uh, grab a bottle of water from the popo, and then He's reduced the tears on the stand. It's okay. That, really? She was all cool about that. She said that was great. Okay. Gus's mom, meantime, Gwen, told People Magazine Thursday that he has been diagnosed with nonverbal learning disorder. It's an anxiety disorder, an attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Quote, Gus's condition is not a setback, she said. It's his secret power. Raw story giving us the quote. Coulter's response did not impress Republicans with the never Donald Trump group, the Lincoln Project. So if he didn't have autism, mocking a child would have been fine, the group replied. And that's the thing. You are um, behaving like a sicko, attacking a child, but it's also so dumb. Do you know how many people have learning disorders, challenges, I prefer? Do you know how many people have children with them? People still love their, their, their kids, their family, their siblings, their parents. So it's just dumb 70 some days before an election, if you want the Republicans to win, to begin attacking children who are navigating life with a learning challenge. What are you doing exactly? You're weird. Apparently so, because one MAGA member, Vince Langman, was also blasted by ex users for following posts ridiculing Gus Wolves and the governor. Oh, I know, I want to see how many times they're going to. Well, it'd be funny. I want to get, I want to get the notifications right away when they attack this kid. Is this, if this is your dad, this is your son. It's just, you're not even funny. It's not cute. It's, um, Sure, bullying, but it's uh, it's worse than beneath us as a society, and we can all be pretty mean, one time or another. But this is gross. Do Republicans not have kids who have learning challenges? MAGA people not have that? They don't understand. I'm guessing they do. Superpowers, Mom says. Don't come after her son. One user brought up the following comparison when criticizing one of Langman's posts. MAGA's leave Baron Trump alone, he's just a kid. Also MAGA's. Langman compares Gus Waltz and Baron Trump writing, pray every day that your sons grow up to be like Baron Trump and not Gus Waltz. Wow. If you're the praying kind of person, I have some other options that you can send upstairs. As USA Today reported following the clip spreading on social media, besides Coulter, Mike Crispy, a Trump supporter and podcaster from New Jersey, Mock Walls' stupid crying son, that's the quote on X, and added, you raised your kid to be a puffy beta male, congrats. Alec Lays, a Trump supporter who hosts a podcast about fatherhood, took his own swipe at the teenager. Get that kid a tampon already. And parent reference to Minnesota state law that Wall signed as governor. It required schools to provide free menstrual supplies to students. You know, um, as we discovered Tim Walls and his wonderful family, and everybody noted how unaffected 
they seem, you know, their dad's the governor, but I think the daughter's in social work. And they're just kind of looking around wide eyed. They're happy to be there, but they're not overdoing it. They have all the love they need in their family unit. That's how it appeared anyway. And I couldn't help but think as I was reading these, boy, what an eye opener. This is what your life is going to be like. Attacked for just loving your dad. Attacked for just being a close family who's not afraid of the spotlight, but not seeking it out. They don't even have a lot of money. They have each other and they love each other. And so you have to try to tear them down. Got it. Got it. Trump supporter, conservative influencer, Laura Loomer. Oh, she's back. Also piled on, which led to MSNBC Morning Joe co host Mika Brzezinski dropping the hammer on those who mock the emotional exchange Friday morning. Listen. I hate to even give this energy or put it out there, but even the reaction to Tim Walz's son um, loving his father and tears of joy was mocked by these right wingers who claim to be political analysts. I mean, that is to me like that was the biggest miss I've ever seen in terms of trying to counter what's happening at a convention from the other side. It was yeah. gross, it was ugly, cool. it was cruel, right. it was disgusting, it was vulgar, it was everything. But, you don't want to be yeah, in a but, human being. But they keep missing. Here, here's they keep missing. They keep missing and I keep wondering who's around these people. If my sibling who would never do that, One's a lawyer, one's a chemist, and they're just, that's just not what they do. Not to say that lawyers and chemists don't do that, but you, you gotta know my sisters, they're not interested in this. But if one of them did put out something like that on X, where it's currently acceptable, I would call them up and say, what are you doing? Did somebody hack you? I, where are the people who, you know, when someone comes up to me at a party and tells a, um, gay joke or says something vile and racist. I'm one of these people who does not give them a courtesy, uh, I'll help you get over the embarrassment laugh. I don't, I mean mug them first of all, or maybe I start with like a straight face. And then I say, oh, you must be having a racist moment and I'm not interested. By the way, it's not even funny. I don't mind saying that. They usually hate me after that, but you started it. Where are all the people who can pull her aside? Yeah, okay, so the one person who she doesn't know said, oh, did you know, you know, I'll test it. Oh, well, okay, I took it down. I'm talking about the people in their circle. Does anybody have a mom or dad or sibling or just a friend? Maybe how about a coworker to say, yo, no, 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 we don't do that here. Nobody did that, no one. Instead, it takes Mika Brzezinski, to say, hey, we gotta, we gotta address something here. These people went on with their lives, probably went to the gym, maybe got one of those pricey coffees, just did what they're gonna do because there are no consequences. She won't be fired, probably has her own company. The people who do her podcast, if she has one, I'm sure she does, aren't gonna say, well, you know what, we gotta, this isn't what we do, this doesn't meet our standards. Oh, yeah, because there aren't standards for some people. There aren't standards for some people. I, I, it's disgusting. You should know better. I wonder if they can get back to a time where that was not okay. Doubt it. I doubt it. 